Well, hello. Oh, there we are. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Hogarth's Global Astrology. Know your planets, know yourself, or know your nation, know yourself. The two are interchangeable. And uh, this is another Archetypes uh, video. I had a little request come in. So Angela, a uh, regular viewer and subscriber, asked me if I would do an archetypal reading for Elon Musk. And I thought, yeah, sure, why not? Now, look, I did a video years ago now on Elon Musk's, Elon Musk's chart. Well, I mean, we're talking, we're probably talking about three and a half years ago now. It's going to be down there in the archive somewhere. So it might be worth having a look. But I mean, of course, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since then. But rather than look at his chart again, which I've done already, <clears throat> let's do the archetypes. Now, I've selected his archetypes. There they are. And, and I put them in there. And here we are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shuffle them. And just like how I did with Potinchka and uh, Duck Larange before, we'll see where they come out. Now, why have I, why have I, why have I done uh, Elon Musk? Um, because we've seen especially since his takeover of Twitter, we've seen in a way just how much of an impact uh, he has and is making on the world. Many, many people, of course, follow Elon, uh, Elon Musk or Muskie or Muskrat, as I sometimes call him, but let's call him Muskie. Many people follow, follow Muskie. Many people, of course, look up to him. And for understandable reasons, you know, obviously, uh, you know, he's got a very pioneering energy. And I'll put the pioneer archetype in here for him, which, of course, is entirely appropriate. However, I've looked at his chart and stuff like that. And as you guys know, I've always been like this. Eh, yeah. And let's just see how things pan out. I think he's a very interesting character, but I do think he is very capricious, uh, unpredictable, uh, and I think uh, kind of sort of like unrealistic and slightly disingenuous as well. I, I don't think his motivations are entirely clear, and I don't think they're always pious or good either. However, I also respect his contribution to pioneering new things, bring, bringing new things about. Although there are many questions over these uh, Teslas, especially the self-driving driving cars that seem to be running over and killing people, you know what I mean, including the drivers themselves. So there's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff that he's put out there that hasn't really fully come to fruition. And we know that he's obsessed with Mars as well. And let me just tell you, we are human beings. We are calibrated to Gaia and the vibration of Gaia. If you think you can just up sticks and go and live on another planet like Mars and not expect to have any adverse effects, think again. <laughs> yeah, Think again. From what I understand, the last time I kind of researched this, if you go to Mars in a physical spaceship, which is what obviously Elon is talking about, it will take about nine months to get there. And there's only certain times of the year that you would actually be able to go because you have to essentially loop a few times. I think you have to use the gravity of the Earth to kind of slingshot yourself. And then I think, uh, you know, other gravities as well to basically get there. And you have to kind of like line up at the right time. Imagine spending nine months on a small little spaceship with people. You know, you're going to get to know each other very well. And I think it's a bit more hardcore than, you know, lockdown. Yeah. Imagine that nine months in one direction. You, you can't get off the ship or what have you. And then when you actually arrive there, imagine you're going to arrive in some desolate environment. Desolate. I mean, just just look at the look at the pictures that come back. It's going to be like being on a giant penal col col uh, colony. It's it's rusty red everywhere because the reason why Mars is red is because it's covered in iron ore. Uh, it has a very thin atmosphere and it has a lower gravity. But imagine no vegetation. No vegetation can grow on Mars, by the way, because the radiation from the sun is so strong. Uh, one of the reasons why our sky is blue is because, well, some say it's to do with perception, but in, in essence, it's, it's the Earth's atmosphere refracting a certain color of light. 
absorbing all of the others and reflecting blue light. That's why the sky appears blue. But that is because the Earth has a thick atmosphere, which, of course, helps protect the majority of life on Earth against the severe radiation and that comes from the sun. Let's not forget the sun's light in many ways is very toxic. We need it. But you get too much. Everything just gets destroyed. Just leave a newspaper in bright sunshine. You will see it will bleach. That's with the protection uh, of the Earth. So imagine when you're on Mars, you've got next to no protection there at all. Nothing grows on Mars. The whole vision of this living on Mars, it means that you would have to be subterranean, living underground. So you'll never see proper sunlight in, in your life. You know, it's all going to be artificial lighting. It's going to be, you're going to be there in the vibration of Mars. And if you guys may remember years ago, now, I did a video where I was given a vision of, of what would happen. Elon Musk does turn up in my dreams from time to time. And you remember I said, I said, humanity would reach a fork in the road. Uh, there'll be those parts of humanity that want to be chipped. Yeah. And they want to go and connect with the Internet and AI and all that stuff. You know, that's their wish. And of course, Elon Musk is part of that. You know, he's done the animal trials, as you know, quite a few of those animals are dead, by the way. And now he started, uh, you know, the human trials. And apparently someone can now move a cursor around, you know, like their, their mouse around uh just using their mind uh, alone we'll have to see where that goes but that is a big part of um that split the rest of us who are interested in spiritual development and enlightenment will go the other way and will develop our own faculties internally many of us on many of us human beings are doing this already but i just wanted to give that background and the vision that i was shown the dream that i was shown that those that actually go to mars if they're not crazy by the time they get off the ship after spending nine months in confinement <laughs> what i saw when they actually hit the planet is they get almost like this kind of psychotic rage comes upon them because you've got to remember we we we're we're calibrated to the gigahertz of Gaia. Imagine just how weird and strange uh, human beings will get once they are no longer on Earth. Think about all the things that happen as well, like when people, when those cosmonauts orbit the Earth and stuff like that, they uh, they start losing bone mass, etc. Because, you know, like you, you, you don't have the same kind of like gravity, you know. Imagine when you're on Mars, you know, gravita the, Mar the gravitation on, on Mars is, is quite a bit lighter than it is here on Earth. So, you know, they're going to be losing bone mass, high levels of radiation, no vegetation. Imagine like it's been proven that looking at green, all the different types of green is soothing for the human soul. Imagine endless, a whole planet with nothing green growing on it. I mean, really? No blue sky, just murky gray in the daytime, maybe black at night. Who knows? You know, it's just anyway. But many, many people look up to Elon Musk. I don't think I don't think he's the most realistic person in the world, but he is good for pioneering ideas and as a figurehead for innovation and stuff like that. And I respect his contribution to the human journey. It's just not one that I want to take. Well, not with him anyway. So chosen the archetypes now as you know there are there are four survival archetypes there is the child archetype and then of course you have the saboteur you have the victim and then you have the working girl once i substituted that word working girl for the p word or, sh sub or shall i say swap the p word for the working girl i found that the video wasn't demonetized so you know all of that stuff remember the old uh, 2 b 2 b is always keeping a little looky looky on what is going on and also as well some of you have told me that you've not been able to i'm not turning up in your searches uh, well not like not turning up in your regular view videos so i'd urge everyone please don't forget to like and subscribe and share to be to be you know when it comes to channels shall we say that uh give deep insights let's put it that way uh sometimes you may struggle to actually find them show up in your regular search so yes you do have to search me out but of course the more that 
like and subscribe that helps the algorithm and it kind of forces the algorithm to kind of share the content which um, i'm sure many of you have found valuable so rinse and repeat so we're going to do two lines of six like i did before let's see here let's see which way here um let's turn this a bit this way I'm sure what that black line is oh i see oh i see here it's my it's my laptop let me just see if i can move that back a bit get that back a little bit there else so we've got a bit more space and uh, let's maybe make this a, on a let's go let's go a bit more like that so we've got more of the length of the table without trying to get that there we are let's go and let's go how high there we are all right so we're going to create two lines of six as I normally do which is making the 12. as you can see i have shuffled the cards so i don't know where they are and of course the archetypes that i've chosen for elon will emerge and for those of you that may be watching this type of video for the first time this is a technique that i pioneered which is called the archetypal blueprint i've been using it for the last oh five years or so five six years with uh clients as part of their psychological and spiritual evaluation and it reveals deep insights into a person's character and what is kind of going on with them um and i've been doing it for years and i decided with my um first video which i did which was duck <laughs> duck larange aka donald trump uh which many and then of course you've seen the putin video which i mean i mean it's, you'll see this technique for yourself if you've not seen it before this is also going to form part of a new playlist uh, as well uh which will literally be specific to archetypes and in that i'll include my navalny assessment that i made three years ago which uh, everything came true everything came true um on that exactly um as i thought it would so what i would do if this were my clients i'll be working with them and i'll uh, via zoom and i'll be getting them to tell me where to drop the numbered token because it's a 12 house system but of course for me i'm gonna have to use my intuition tune into elon's energy and drop the token where i should where i feel it should go or where my higher self is telling me to drop the token and then we <clears throat> then we read the cards from there so you'll see <clears throat> okay token number one all right i gotta go there token number two Oh, I feel like it was there. Oh, that was a little bit dry. Token number three. And just so you got today's date, today is Monday, the 26th of February, and it's one minute past four p.m. UK time. Mm -hmm. There. Token number four. Mm, yeah, I think it was there. Token number five. Mm, there. Token number six. Oh, I feel like it's there. Token number seven. No, it's this one interesting the order that his ones are coming out in token number eight there gosh token number nine no it was there <clears throat> token number ten it was there token number eleven there okay that becomes it's 
went in quite the natural order, which is, well, it's mixed up a little bit. Now I'm going to put them in numerological order. And just so you know, guys, I'm going to be creating. So for membership, that is at the Vedic Apprentice and higher, <clears throat> I'm actually going to create kind of almost like a little course as as it were where I'll go through the I'll go through the archetypes and their meanings and everyone knows I use the Caroline Mace oops the Caroline Mace uh, archetype deck if you don't know who Caroline Mace is check her out my god fabulous um real you know medical intuitive she's she's a, she's she's a legend and I use her cards. Maybe one day I'll do my own uh, archetype deck or my own tarot deck, but that's the way ways off in the future. Make sure everything is in order. Okay, so what does this mean? Let me sit sit here. The top line will reflect everything that is known about the person, uh, th uh, things they know about themselves and stuff like that. It will be quite clear and obvious. The lower line is much more about their internal world, their internal world, things that we may not know about them or things they may not even necessarily know about themselves. Houses one, two, seven, and eight will be somehow foundational to that person's character. Houses four and 10 will always speak about the career, but also as well their public name and fame, standing highest goals and achievements. And the last two cards, six and 12, will somehow sum up what the whole reading is about. Let me just see if I can get just a bit more in there. There we are. Okay, so let's be, let's begin 15 minutes or 17 minutes in now. So uh, here, oh, I forgot, I need to read off my little sheet uh let's find someone who had um, an archetypal reading one minute just so you can see how it all goes through here we are oh, this is mariana she had an archetypal reading i won't be reading her archetypes but i'll be reading the uh language so with my clients i fill out uh, this form yeah fill out this form with their archetypes and notes, etc. But I just need to read off this bits here, just as my aid memoir. Okay, so the first house, house number one. This is the ego, the self, the CEO of the art of a person's archetypal company that leads the way. The key word here is I am, and it's relative to Aries. So let's see who's in Elon's first house, which archetype, who's running the show. Be interesting if it was the pioneer, wouldn't it? But let's see. Let's see what spirit is saying. Oh, well, this is this is very apt. The networker. Okay, this makes absolute sense. The reason why I chose the networker, of course, is because he has taken over Twitter now. So here and now, remember, people can either be a combination of the shadow and the light. With Putinshka, of course, it was more about the shadow because that's what he's manifesting. And then some people may be more of the light. I'm going to say with Elon Musk, I'm going to say it's probably going to be about 50-50 between the two. But, you know, you decide. Here's what's written. So the light attributes of the networker enhances unity through the sharing of information, engenders social awareness and empathy. Shadow attribute conveys information only for personal gain spreads fear and falsehood so we can say that really elon has been has been accused of both so um in terms of when it came to taking over twitter do you remember he was talking about you know free speech and um everyone having a platform to speak freely and then uh we realized uh, those that were criticizing Musk suddenly found that they didn't have so much free speech, uh, that they were being curtailed. And particularly those that were showing where his private jets and stuff like that were going were forcibly removed off the platform. And uh, working from him uh, turns out not to, not to have been so good. So he's a mixed bag. But there you have the networker. So that literally is X. That is Twitter. Yeah. And you can see that this means as well that Twitter as well is four and foremost in in his in his mind in terms of 
what that is all about and of course facilitating let's not forget starlink as well which i genuinely think is one of his more much more positive contributions spreading internet you know for the whole world how it will be used of course again it's like electricity how people use the internet of course is up to them but you can see here at twitter slash x the networker front and center all right Let's look at position number two. So I call this the real estate department. So this deals with possessions and life values, stored resources, potential earnings, slash savings, or financial blocks. Now we know he's not short of a penny or two. The voice, food and the practicalities of the body. The key word here is I have, and it's relative to Taurus. So this is gonna talk about Elon's relationship with wealth, money, his assets, how that's being run. Yeah, we know he's one of the richest guys in the world, with Putin being the richest, of course. Like I said, he's a trillionaire, Putinshka. But anyway, that's a sidetrack. Who's here? Ah, this is interesting. Gets the judge. Yeah. Okay, so what's the light attribute? Balancing justice and compassion, managing the fair distribution of power. Shadow attributes, offering only destructive criticism, misusing business, legal or criminal authority. Now, isn't this interesting? Because this, the second house also deals with speech. And do you remember how I was saying that um, Elon was talking about free speech and stuff like that? But the second you criticized him personally, all of a sudden it wasn't so free. Yeah. What I forgot to say as well, cars that are next to each other speak to each other upstairs and downstairs and diagonal. Yeah. And diagonal. So what this says to me here is that and this is, again, you know, again, my personal insight and stuff like this. Twitter, he, he purchased Twitter, as we know, for gargantuan sums of money. And the whole idea was freedom of speech, etc., and stuff like that. However, a lot of people have begun to find the platform what? Very what? Judgmental. Have they not? Also as well, Elon has also proved himself to be quite thin skinned when it comes to uh, critiquing him personally. And he's also had uh, people forcibly removed uh, off the platform that crit criticize him too much. And let's not forget, he also recently got into trouble, didn't he, for removing the posts of Navalny's wife. Yeah. I forget her first name, Navalny, uh, of course, uh, Navalny, but it's Navalnaya, I think, uh, remember the, the feminine version of the name in, uh, for Russia gets, it gets feminized. And he, so everyone was like, what are you doing? Why are you taking down her comment? Why are you taking down her speech? And people were kind of looking at that and being like, hmm, what, you're trying to help out a little bit of Putinshka here? Yeah, so we can see there is this element here where it, I, I think he's advocated Twitter as a, as a platform for free speech. But when you actually look to see how these two archetypes are actually interacting, it's showing that maybe it's not quite as free as people would like to think. And there is certainly an element of judgment, criticism and stuff like that. I'm not saying the original uh, Twitter was perfect, but I think we all know that it's become... Let's say, shall we say, a bit more contentious, but some people like that as well. But what I'm saying, he, seeing here is, it, it, we see it's it's been slightly disingenuous. It's not been quite as free. Also, as well, we also need to look at who's not being critiqued on Twitter as well. And you'll also notice that uh, you know he's very strong when it comes to a critique uh, for China and Xi Jinping and the CCP in particular. Not conjecture, not making that up. That's just fact. Yeah. If you go and check and take a little look, you'll see what I mean. But anyway, so we can see there. there's an element there of judgment now, quite literally, with Twitter, if we take that on that face value. OK, let's go to the third house. So I call this the PR community. PR department, communication style and siblings or friends that are like family, neighbors short travel, weekends away. The key word here is I say, and it's relative to Gemini. So, but again, this is the media house. So we're already seeing second house and third house both deal with speech and communications. But let's see who's in that official um, media landscape, as it were, which archetype. Ah! 
The working girl. Let's just put it that way. I won't hold up the card too long. The working girl, you know, uh, which is, you know, begins with, uh, but the card is called P-R-O-S-T-I-T-U-T-E. Uh, yeah. So this is fascinating. So the light attribute accentuates the challenge of surviving without negotiating the power of your spirit. The shadow attribute places material considerations and security above self-empowerment. So if we look here, the working girl or the doop, doop, doop is right in the third house of media. These three cards are actually revealing an awful lot, aren't they, about maybe uh, Trump's um, that Freudian slip. Uh, Muskie's true intentions for Twitter. I think it has a lot more to do with the money aspect, much more to do with the money aspect. Here we can literally see X here uh, being like the CEO, being the CEO of this whole archetypal reading, the central cause. We see this element here of judgment and we see here the raw commercial aspect. Remember as well, he introduced, you know, you pay such and such for a blue tick. Yeah, I mean, you have to do that on Facebook anyway. But you remember, there was the whole thing paying for the blue tick, this element of this selling to the highest bidder, as it were. Let's not forget, too, uh, someone had to run to the Middle East, remember, to make up the monies to be able to buy Twitter as well. So we see here communications for sale, quite literally, this element here of uh, potentially selling out as well to the highest bidder as well. So for me, I think these first three are very, very telling, very, very telling, all talking about Twitter so far. All right, let's look at the four, fourth house. So when away from work, I call this the home, growing up or current, history, emotions, nurturing or not, work from home the key word here is i need and it's relative to the sign of cancer let's not forget too i also associate the fourth house with the four with the heart chakra it is also associated with the color green and it has a lot to do as well with the mother the parenting overall childhood growing up but the mother in particular as well so let's see who turns up here ah very appropriate. We have the engineer. Now, this is really interesting. So what, what does this show? That One of the ways that I, I interpret this, whatever card shows up in the fourth house, that is the essence. It's at the very core of, of what that person is about as well, because it's in the heart. Home is where the heart is, of course. It shows the essence, uh, the emotional essence in many ways, the spiritual essence, because we need to remember that the lower chakra, so you've got one, two, and three, the heart chakra is the gateway between the lower chakras and the higher ones in between. So if we look here, Elon has got the engineer, which of course is a very appropriate archetype for him. So the light attribute, ability to give creative energy a practical expression. He certainly has that gift and ability, doesn't he? Fabulous at that. Talent for designing resolutions to common dilemmas. So again, excellent. He is a, he is a he is a very good engineer, and I don't want this just to seem like to come across as just a cuss out of uh, of Elon because he does have his virtues as well, but it has to be balanced. He's quite a capricious character. Now look, if you read this, well, I'll read it. Shadow attribute. Reliance on mechanistic solutions without regard for emotional consequences. Now, isn't that true? How many times have we seen where Elon has been caught out because or critiqued or fined or affected the share price or something like that of Twitter or Tesla because of things that he may have said or for one of the reasons why I left Twitter X, for example, was how he treated his staff. Do you remember like when he was going through just tearing the ass out of absolutely everything? And he basically said, look, you need to work. You're going to need to work 16, 17 hours. It's going to be crushing. You're going to be destroyed. And you just do that work if you want to if you want to stay on, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people were like, I'm out of here. See you later, dude. Bye bye. 
yeah so sometimes the the shadow of the engineer is like it says relying on mechanistic solutions without regard for emotional consequences look we know elon is probably on the spectrum somewhere and it doesn't mean that anyone is on the spectrum doesn't have loving love in their heart of course they do but it, he is often very mechanical he's quite an emotionally awkward person and we've seen that time and time again how that has got him into trouble where he has not anticipated the maybe the emotional psychological backlash to some of the things that he's implemented this also shows as well a person who struggles at time to kind of connect authentically with his with with with, with his heart uh in a non-clinical way the fourth house is all about intuition it's not a rational house it is part of the divine feminine and with the engineer here he's kind of imposing a very kind of more almost kind of methodical dry masculine element in that almost that shadow masculine element in terms of just being trying to be clinical but you it, it, that's not life is yin and yang yeah we have the yang which is you know the the outward going that sort of archetypal masculine energy and we have the yin which is that softer intuitive uh, energy both can have fierce sides to them but they're very different and they they are part of those divine opposites so we see here there is an issue where uh where he has an issue i would say connecting on that heart level sometimes with people and i think a lot of part of people that have uh, critiqued him they have sometimes sounding very clinical or even cold and if you saw the way he treated like his staff i think he's learned from that now but it was one of the things that switched me off the platform because i'm just like i'm not going to support a platform where he's going to treat his staff like that it just i mean some people didn't even know that they got the sack they were just locked out of their accounts <laughs> and got some email later on so you know again but i think he is a bit on the spectrum it doesn't mean he doesn't have love in his heart of course he does but he it, it can also be a bit mechanical a bit clinical a bit clunky and uh, i think we've seen that as well with some of the collaborations he's done with around the world where people are kind of looking at him and going really you're getting into bed with that mm, not sure about that all right and also as well there could be that issue there on connecting on that fundamental human level so let's look who's used in the fifth house so the fifth house i call the events manager so it deals with creativity romance luck education of all kinds it also deals with children but not just physical children brain babies as well it deals with uh, opportunities good hunches gambling and fun the key word here is i lead or I create, and it is relative to Leo. So this is a very creative house. Let's see who is in Elon's imagination, intelligence, and giving consultation and advice to others and his approach to creativity. Let's have a look. Ah, perfect. Perfect. The pioneer. Perfect. Um, that is absolutely bang on, isn't it? And that's really where you would want this archetype. So if we look here, uh, shadow attribute is compulsive need to keep moving on. Of course, he does have a bit of that. He is a very intelligent person and he's always excited by the new. I think that's sometimes why some of his projects have gone a little bit awry. You know, rusty Teslas, self-driving, crashing, uh, things not quite working, orders not being fully fulfilled. But look, the light attribute passion for doing and creating what has not been done before of course that is elon all over isn't it he wants to travel to mars like i said i ain't going on that ship <laughs> good luck good luck with that one but he is an icon icon of pioneering new things he's very imaginative He's always prepared to uh, give it a go, isn't he, to try new things. Not necessarily all of his ideas work out. And, of course, with the pioneer, not everything is supposed to work out. That's the whole point. Pine the pioneers are here to break new ground. I think some of his most significant work, of course, is going on now with Neuralink, which, of course, is putting the chips in the head. But this is also reflecting the the split, the pathway uh, of humanity splitting. We come back together in the end, but let me tell you, it's a good few, I would say a good few hundred years down the, down the road. But it shows here 
this is also a house of passion, joy, romance, things that we do for the love of it. So we can see here, he really does enjoy coming up with those new ideas, getting together with teams, giving consultation and advice to others, innovating, and you can see the pioneer is right next to the engineer. Absolutely perfect, I'm sure you would agree with that. All right, let's go to the sixth house. And so here we are, the sixth house. I call this the HR department. So it deals with day job slash career, practicalities, employees, colleagues, slash uh, adversity from others, strategy, health, routines, details, nitpicking. The key word here is I work and it's relative to Virgo. So let's see who's in the workhouse. We certainly know, I think he probably works a bit too hard, but how can he not? being a multi-billionaire, head of so many kind of companies and people. But let's see who is in the sixth house to see how he's really feeling about his day job. And I also call this house the salad bowl of life. So let's have a look. Ah, I knew it. I had a feeling, look, the victim. Wow. I'll read the light and shadow attributes, but isn't that perfect? One of the things I forgot to say at the start of this and what I say to all of my clients who go through this consultation I say every card is perfect because it will illustrate when the intuition is being used really it will articulate this this says two things very clearly I've already alluded to this of course in terms of the victimization that his employees felt yeah when he took over Twitter, in particular, the people that were just ruthlessly sacked uh, or just worked to the bone and just said, look, just get on with it. Or they felt they had to leave. There were some lawsuits and various different bits and bobs. You know, it really was a cat amongst the pigeons. But what this is also showing as well is whenever I see this card here, <clears throat> any card that turns up in the sixth house, there's always an element of a fatigue or drudgery associated with it and whenever i see the victim in the sixth house a person feels weighed down by often the repetitive tasks uh, of their job the, uh, the sixth house deals literally repetitive tasks it's um it's maintenance it's the things we have to do what not what we necessarily want to do so what this says to me is is that there is an element here where i think elon is is being somewhat overwhelmed by the sheer level and quantity of work he is having to do now you can imagine look many people dream of being billionaires and stuff like that and you know love them or hate them or whatever let me tell you it is a tremendous amount of work being a billionaire colossal gargantuan because, of course, one has to work at huge economies of scale, unless you've married it, of course. If you've married it and you've inherited it, fine, you know, put your feet up. But if you are a self-made billionaire, as Elon is, I know he comes from money, but, you know, billionaire is a whole different kind of asset class. One has to manage a multiplicity of different things. And what this shows me here, as much as he loves the pioneering, he loves the ideas, but I think the execution for him is difficult. This is not a sexy house. I always say the sixth house is, 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 is it's a dull house. It's the work we have to do in order to get things to work smoothly. The victim here shows me that maybe Elon is kind of cutting corners slightly on some of the drudgery. Yeah. Maybe this is why some of these Teslas are the batteries are exploding. Uh, some of them are getting rusty, orders not being fulfilled, etc. Because that's that's nut and bolts, that's sixth house stuff. In order for like vehicles, machines, you know, sixth house has a lot to do with machines. In order for these things to work uh, smoothly, they have to be rig rigorously tested over and over and over and over again. They have to pass strict regulations. It's very repetitive. It's very dull. It's very boring. There's a certain element to vehicles where, you know, it has to work. And I get the sense that he's kind of struggling a bit with that because he loves the pioneering and the engineering but maybe not this so much. So if we look at the light attribute, prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. So we know he has victimized some people. Shadow attributes, playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity. We've seen a little bit of that. 
or inability to maintain personal boundaries. So I think what is, if we look here at the top line, Elon's work is all encompassing. I would imagine that he has almost next to no boundaries between his personal time and his connection with his with his work and his career. I mean, we've just seen that. I mean, it is just a constant 24-7 thing. And that is part of what being in a billionaire class is about because, you know, their work is their life and their life is their work. There is no separation, really. And I think here for Elon, it, he almost can't escape it. I think I think he actually needs a break. I would say looking at this, Elon, you need, you need to take a few weeks off if you can. Maybe get someone in that you can delegate work to because there's a severe risk of burnout here with this uh, with this combination. In fact, he may already be burnt out. That's often the case when I see the victim in the sixth. Oh, what happened there? What happened there? Oh, something's going weird with my... Sorry, something's going weird with my... Did you see that? Wow. I think something very truthful was spoken there. Let's go to the lower line. So I'm doing on time. I need to hurry up. All right. Seventh house. I call this the contracts and due diligence department. So it deals with business slash partnerships, marriage, important contracts, key relationships. The key word here is I balance. So this isn't only just going to talk about uh, Elon's personal life with his marriages, which have kind of not necessarily been the best as from what I understand. A lot of divorce. This will also talk about his business, his relationship with the outside world. The seventh Seventh house is also anyone that's not us. Contracts, imports and exports. So this is very relevant for Trump. Uh, sorry, for um, Musk's, Muskie's business, international business and stuff like that. Let's have a look. Wow. The saboteur. Isn't that interesting? Wow. OK. Light attribute. Highlights your fear of self-empowerment and the changes it would bring to your life. Now, he's not fear, fearful of self-empowerment, of course, but let's look at that lower line. Shadow attribute induces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others. However, with this card as well, it will also show where a person may have felt undermined by other people. Now, this is getting very interesting. We see the victim is in the sixth element of feeling overwhelmed, overworked and burnt out by the day job. And then when we actually look at the business in terms of its international trading and stuff like that, we see the saboteur is here. There is an element where Elon is feeling potentially compromised by the international agreements that he has. It's almost like he's feeling maybe sabotaged and undermined. I think this could have a lot to do with these with these international government contracts that he has to have because remember look the starlink do you remember all of the controversy of course uh, between over you know ukraine russia conflict and did they have contracts or not do you remember all of that hoo-ha uh he was it was alleged that he switched off starlink etc for the ukrainians which intervened they say in maybe would have affected the outcome of the war do you remember all of that kind of stuff I think it was because it was something uh, over money or what have you. But we see here as well, I think this is also as well where Elon feels maybe attacked or potentially uh, punished or undermined by international opinion. But this is also as well his international contracts that he has. I think he's probably feeling compromised in some way, overworked and compromised. And then when we look to see who is diagonal and above, if we look here above, we have Twitter. Yeah, this is this is the networker. And then but look who's diagonal. It is the judge. So what this says to me is I think Elon has felt very judged in terms of his relationship with Twitter and how Twitter is now performs on the international stage. 
But this is also talking about the deeper business and contracts he has with uh, countries and governments. Like I said, he is in bed with some interesting characters. Uh, everyone has to use that Starlink now. And I think that influence in a way, he's often paying for that influence with this element of overwork. And this, what this also suggests to me is, is that this is people wanting to use Starlink for their own uh, methodology, because once they've once they've actually bought, you know, the infrastructure, the satellites, they can then pawn it off the, you know, to other people. And I think that's happened as well. So what this suggests to me, there is an element here where um, Elon may not feel fully in control of his international businesses. And there is this element here where the other or whoever he's contracting with, there could be an element of sabotage there, potentially of his vision, his intentions. So look at that. I wasn't expecting that. Wow. Okay, eighth house. So if we look here, I call this the tax and accounts department. So other people's resources, family, in-laws, spouses, money, tax, inheritance, which could be financial, mental, or physical. This also deals with the darker side of sex and the occult. The key word here is I use, and it is relative to Scorpio. So this is talking about other people's money. This can also talk about uh, tax, investments, stock market, bonds, yields, that kind of thing. Let's see what's going on here. Well, the wounded child, the wounded child in the eighth. Wow. This is really quite profound. Now, why did I choose the wounded child for Elon? Some of you may know, but for those that don't know, he really did suffer uh, in his childhood growing up. He was horrifically bullied uh, as a kid when he went to school. And he said he would literally get beaten up uh, black and blue. Yeah, he literally used to come home with busted lips and stuff like that. And that was one of the reasons why he learned to box, learned to fight, yeah, because it was literally self-defense when he was growing up in South Africa. But one of the things he said was, was that if he got beaten up, he would then get a lot of stick off his father. And sometimes he may even got beaten by his father. And I think there were tremendous father wounds there. His mother, from what I understand, I, you know, I can't judge, but she seems to be quite a nice person. I don't know enough about his personal story, but I do know there was severe suffering and beatings from the father as well so of course here now remember the eighth house is the house of sex death and rock and roll so things could have been even worse than we may than what may already be public knowledge because look this is happening on the lower line Do you remember so the lower line is much more about the hidden the internal world so if we look here light attributes um, or look, I'll read the shadows. So blames all dysfunctional relationships on childhood wounds, resists moving on through forgiveness. Now, isn't that interesting? Which you, because you, might, you, you guys may remember my dragon dream that I had recently, Elon turned up in it. Just remember, because I'd used AI and uh, to create these these dragons, and you have to twin with your with your dragon. You wear a headpiece, not a chip in the head like Elon once <laughs> but i guess some people could do that as well you twin with your dragon and do you remember in the dream he tried to ride the dragons because he was intoxicated by the idea but he couldn't and i said to him you remember i i said in the dream and i and he was trying to get on the dragon and he couldn't because it causes a lot of pain if uh, this person has got a lot of conflict and i said if you want to ride become a dragon white rider you have to forgive your father do you remember that dream isn't that interesting that the wounded child has turned up right there and in the in the, in the dream uh, elon was really shaken and he burst into tears and he went away and he really did some internal work did a lot of shadow work and he did forgive his father and he was able to ride the dragons. So here, this is saying to me, and if we look, who's above? Look at this, the judge, yeah, the judge. So what this is saying to me is, is here now, the second house also deals with childhood. So I think this is literally, because the second house, remember, is also family childhood as well. The first four houses in, um, in Vedic astrology, in terms of how I'm, doing it reading my 12th house interpretation deals with childhood 
So houses one, two, three, four, childhood, houses five, six, seven, and eight, puberty, maturity, houses nine, 10, 11, and 12 are mature years out of contribution. So we can see here he faced a tremendous amount of judgment at home. I think this is the critique and the wounds here from the father, yeah, which of course has led to, you know, part of who, who Elon is today. We also see the saboteur is next door and the networker. So what this is saying to me is, is that his childhood wounds really are very central to that acquisition of, of, of Twitter. I think there is that element maybe to kind of, you know, mitigate in a way, maybe some of that bullying that he had, but it's also become a platform where some people consider it's become more bullying. So do you see there's a conflict here? We need to see what card comes out next because the wounded child will be affecting all of these archetypes. If we see here, we've got the working girl here as well. So this is also suggesting to me that the Twitter acquisition was a part of self-esteem as well. Him trying to find, to bolster his self-esteem because of these wounds. But also as well, this is the, um, it deals with other people's money. These are the share prices. If you think of well, sometimes how he has wounded his own share price when it comes to Twitter or his business acquisitions by maybe speaking against them or saying, oh, I'm thinking of dropping this or that stock. Do you remember he's got in trouble for that as well? Wow. All right, ninth house. Call this the mission statement slash philosophy slash intellectual property, personal philosophy, religion, seeking knowledge, education, big travels. The key word here is I seek and it's relative to Sagittarius. So let's see who's in the philosophy house here. Ah, amazing. The athlete, the athlete. Ah. I love this technique. Isn't it remarkable, guys? Even if I do say so myself, but it's it's just magic. It's magical. All right. Light attribute, dedication to transcending physical limits, including handicaps, it says here, uh, or disabilities, I think is a more appropriate word. Development of personal willpower and strength of spirit. So we know, yes, he does have these qualities. Again, this isn't just an Elon bash. We need to acknowledge his gifts and his qualities and there is an element of, of, of tremendous willpower. And he's obviously had to come overcome a lot because, look, the athlete is next to the wounded child. And do you remember how I was saying earlier on he was bullied severely at school and he had to learn how to defend himself, how to defend himself against those attacks. If we read the shadow attribute, though, so here maybe this is maybe where it goes a little bit too far for Elon. Misuse of athletic ability for selfish ends or false sense of invulnerability and entitlement. So I don't know if that fight ever happened, but do you remember he was talking about what the cage fight he wanted to have with Mark Zuckerberg? Let me know if that happened, guys. I don't think it did as far as I'm aware. But nonetheless, do you remember it was a huge story. So here we can we can see how that athlete is there. But there is that element uh, because it's next to, to the wounded child. There is a there. I would say there is a preoccupation where in order to try and mitigate these wounds that, that he has felt so much in his life, he feels like he has to be powerful. He needs to be able to express his prowess in the world and like you can't come after me yeah? if you think in terms of as well of that dominance he now has with that star link how in many ways that has protected him in many ways because it's become so instrumental if we look here the judge is diagonal to the athlete and so is the engineer but it's next to the wounded child and the and the the working girl almost said the p word the working girl is uh, above the athlete. So this is saying that part of his compensation for these wounds is to is to use his engineering technology, uh, Twitter and the like, his companies to build himself up, to make himself feel stronger. He is physically strong, as we've seen. Uh, but he has had to cultivate that in order to survive. Let's not forget the eighth house has a lot to do with survival. Okay, let's look at the 10th house. 
Tenth house, promotion and recognition after working for it. Highest potential, ideal career, climbing to the crown of gold. Public life, the key word here is I achieve and is relative to Capricorn. So we know he's achieved a tremendous amount. Let's see who's in here. Ah, this says a lot to me. <laughs> he's got the knight. The knight has shown up. Now, light attributes, loyalty, romance, and chivalry, a love, a love of honor. Now, why did I choose the knight here? One of the reasons why I chose the knight for Elon is because he is a highly idealistic person. He's very, very idealistic. You know, his whole adventures going to Mars, etc., and all that stuff. I'm not saying don't have those, but there are certain bald truths about what is required to get to Mars and then what one has to do when you're actually on the surface. And of course, he has that geeky sci-fi energy. If we look, who's above? Who's above the night? Yeah. Oh. It's the engineer. Yeah. So here we can see in a way that the engineer and the knight are working together to kind of create a technological utopia or fantasy. Let's not forget with his, with his, with his uh, Neuralink, he wants to be able to upload consciousness to the internet. And of course, once you're able to do that, you can upload your consciousness. When your physical body dies, you can then download it into some, someone or something else, which is a lot of what these billionaires are going for because they suffer from megalomania. Of course, they want to live forever, don't they? But look, let's read the shadow attributes. Shadow attributes, allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle, romantic delusions. Wow. Now, for me, I think that is profound because we do know that he has, uh, again, for entertainment purposes, only very strong links with China and the CCP. He just he does. I'll find that. Um, I'll find that uh, journalist Medi something like that, and I'll put it. I'll put in the video description where he looked at all of Musk's uh, connections. Let's not forget as well. He needed that money as well from the Saudis to be able to buy Twitter, and of course we know his connection as well with uh, Putinska. Um, and, you know, I think he's trying to potentially wriggle out some of those some of those things. So here you see allegiance to to a destructive ruler or principle, romantic delusions. So I think this is, again, if we look here with the in engineer, remember the shadow attribute, reliance on mechanistic solutions without regard for emotional consequences. So I think this is part of the relationship where Musk has got into these relationships with very powerful people. We know Xi Jinping and the CCP, immensely powerful. Russia, immensely powerful. Saudi is immensely powerful. You know, he's all of these government contracts. But I think there are times where he's been he's been clinical and mechanistic and has not really thought to himself about what the emotional and psychological costs are for getting into bed with such characters. I mean, there's no going back now. Look, Starlink satellites are all over the world. But I think there is an element here where he is having to be maybe a bit more realistic about some of the people that and institutions he's aligned himself with, particularly because when we notice here as well that the saboteur is in the seventh house of imports, trades, goods, services, marriage, etc., And there is this element of overwork here in the victim in the sixth. And I think it's because he's been a bit maybe a bit unrealistic or over idealistic about his connections, his career and what the true costs of those are and who he's worked with. However, we see this part of a almost a romanticism when it comes to his pioneering work. So he really does have this dream like utopian ideas. And of course, I think he had utopian ideas as well for Twitter as well, because we see here the working girl is in the third house of communications, could also have maybe slightly unrealistic expectations about what he is physically able to do, because the 
athlete is next door. So again, he has to be careful about burning out. So my advice to, to Elon would be like, you need a rest because I, do, I think he's being idealistic about his career, about how much he can actually do. And it may not be recognizing his physical limitations or may even be taking some kind of, again, for entertainment purposes only, some kind of stimulation in order to be, be able to maintain his level of work. Right. Oh, gosh, only a couple of minutes to go. Let's get the last two in. Hope you're enjoying this and please don't forget to like and subscribe and share. OK, 11th House, the outreach department, the network, the house of gains, public finance, the wider world, community, social media, charity, philanthropy, giving back. The key word here is I share and it's relative to Aquarius. So we know he is uh, well up in there on those concepts. Let's have a look. It also deals with technology as well. This is also that Twitter energy. Let's have a look. Creating communities. Who's in the 11th? Ah, the hero. Wow. <laughs> the hero. Here we are. Passion for a journey of personal empowerment is the light attribute, shadow attribute, escapism and a false sense of heroism. Wow. I think this is really starting to become quite clear now, isn't it, of what is really mo motivating Elon on a certain level. And again, this is my interpretation. I think these wounds, these profound wounds he's experienced in childhood has caused him to kind of create a mythical version of himself, almost this. I mean, he is immensely powerful, but it, he, I think he has a romanticized ideal about himself and his role in the world for taking on Twitter in the first place to this idea of, oh, it's free speech. But then we see that judgment kind of coming in when he is actually genuinely critiqued. And I think it's to do with these wounds trying to compensate um, for that lack of, of, of value he may have felt inside, particularly because the prostitute... <clears throat> I've said it now. Oops. The working girl deals with how our self value. But look, it's diagonal to the wounded child. The judge is there. The athlete is here. And the hero is next to the knight. Remember, the knight also has allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle or romantic delusions. So we see here there is a huge amount of myth making, fantasy projections going on with Elon that may not be fully realistic because if we look here you look we've got the victim diagonal he's not wanting to uh maybe fulfill or go through the full grind and nitty-gritty required to make all of his projects watertight watertight I would say for him less is more you know maybe just really focus on like doing those things really really well doing less but doing that stuff really really well because a, a, some of these projects really haven't worked out but we also see here the pioneer is above the hero so he doesn't want to stop uh he wants to keep going but remember the shadow attribute is of, of the pioneer is compulsive need to keep moving on but then that passion is a uh, passion for doing and creating what has not been done before so he has this highly idealistic vision of himself and the world which on one level is amazing but we're seeing here is quite a lot of it the lower line is showing it's a bit ungrounded that's my interpretation <laughs> let's use in the 12th house so the basement the subconscious the put the taboo yet uh, bondage yet limitless the deepest shadow the highest light the collective unconscious dark oh, sorry karmic lessons dreams all is one one is in the all the dragons the key word here is i'm all and nothing and it's relative to pisces so let's see who's in elon's deep subconscious how interesting the liberator so the light attributes freeing yourself and others from outmoded beliefs releasing negative thought patterns so you can see there is that huge element there where like when he took on twitter he was saying it was about freedom wasn't it freedom of speech etc all of this stuff 
Even though the liberator has come last, and these are two physical lines, the 12th house and the first house are next to each other. So that means that the networker and the liberator are next door. So he wanted what? Do you remember he said? Wanted Twitter in order to what? Liberate people. Yeah, remember it was all about freedom of speech. But let's read the shadow attribute. Imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate, ignoring legitimate constraints. Wow. And I think, you remember how I said the last two cards will somehow sum up what the whole reading is about. And if we look here, we have the victim in the sixth and the liberator in the twelfth. What this says to me, just to round this all up, is that, yes, he does have intentions to liberate humanity in, in a sort of way, taking things to the next level, but it's highly romantic and idealistic. He's not always in connection with his heart, especially in regards to, and, and, and that affects the decision he makes on the world stage, the 10th house in his career. He doesn't always anticipate things correctly. Part of why he wants to build himself up is because of his childhood wounds. So, but it means sometimes he goes to extremes. He sometimes takes things too far. He does have a, a quite a harsh temper that, from what has been from what has been said. He may not throw ketchup, but I mean, he, you know, he throws one or two things. Um, so there is that kind of a slight bit of that misuse of that power as well. But in terms of when we look at the shadow with the liberator imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate, ignoring legitimate constraints, we can see how that happened in the workplace. And this is why Elon did get into a lot of trouble, because he just said, look, unless you want to work every hour, God sends man up or you're sacked. Yeah. Remember that. And that, again, is not recognizing legitimate constraints, what people can and cannot do. But more importantly, I think this is talking about himself, him not in wanting to acknowledge his legitimate constraints on how much he can physically do as a person. But this can also be in terms of his output, how much work he's able to actually do. We all have a limit of what we can do what we can put out. But in terms of, you know, looking at this as a whole, this is a man who has a, a vision, uh, a vision not only for himself, but all of humanity. There is a part of him that genuinely wants to maximize human potential and the human journey. But the, the methodology and some of the means that he's employed to get there are not necessarily realistic. He's probably got his hands in a few too many pies and is feeling exhausted and burnt out, maybe because he's taken on an unrealistic level of responsibility in terms of wanting to pioneer with these ideas. Whereas I think if he just focused on maybe, you know, two to three kind of projects and did them really, really well, mastered his sixth house, took some rest, took some time out now and again, maybe every quarter, he just gives himself like a week or two off where he recuperates because the sixth house also deals with health. Then I think he'll be a lot more balanced in his approach and he would find that his projects would advance in a more coherent kind of way, rather than cars crashing, batteries exploding, del orders and uh, deliveries not being fully, you know, done. But in a way, this is a man who's very idealistic, almost romantic about the human story. He very much sees himself as a pioneer and a hero, but it, he needs to recognize legitimate uh, constraints. And when he does that, then he truly will kind of go forward and be able to take humanity to the next level for those that want to go for the whole chip thing and stuff like that. So it's still a remarkable chart. We can see the shadow and the light. And he does have uh, commendable skills, but he does have to be a bit more realistic and there is danger of that burnout there. So that concludes that. I don't want to go on too long. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and share, particularly if you found this uh, interesting. 
uh please share as well and uh, because obviously youtube is not always necessarily favoring me and my content because it is pretty truthful i think we can agree so uh you know give give some extra support and if you're not able to donate or become a member or anything like that just watch an ad count to 11 yeah before you skip thank you <laughs> and i will i will leave it there i hope you guys found that interesting yeah and let me know in the comments who you'd like me to look at next all right. Bye for now. Big love. Mwah. All right. Oh, it's taking a little while. There we go. Bye bye.